Hey Jack, welcome to part two in my response to you. I'm gonna read your next block of your message to me and then I'll follow up with some responding thoughts. In part two you said, brief bio, married 10 years to Amy, two amazing boys aged eight and six. We have a very busy household. We both work in the same vocation. Amy is more career project accomplishment driven than me. I regret my career choice. At times, I feel like I'm on her treadmill, supporting her life structure. I can't keep up. Our love life, our love slash life connection sucks. I expect if I break the dynamic, cut the enmeshment, I will have to ruin the structure that she enjoys, which in parentheses you said is a great house, provider of salary, and child care. Um, okay, let's talk about a few things. I, I was really drawn to your mention of I'm on her treadmill. Um, we step on our partner's treadmill or into their direction as men, just to be really simple, when we don't have one or trust our own. And so there's always going to be in a relationship a leader and a follower. And if Again, this is going to step on political correctness toes. I personally don't care, but it's going to trip some people up. When the leader in the relationship that way is the female, she will generally um, move into a place where she is not romantically and sexually connecting to a man. Though she may want to be. She probably, if she's like most women, Jack, is going to feel like... You're a great friend, your great roommate will appreciate some things uh, that you bring to the table and provide, but she's also going to be probably daydreaming about a man taking her, penetrating her in every sense of the word, in, in the romantic connection, in the sexual way. She's not going to find a man who is following her around as generally exciting that way, again, regardless of her ideology. Because there is a natural dynamic between the energies of masculinity and femininity where when there, there is a leader a going first, there's, there's a penetrating energy and there's a being penetrated energy. And to be blunt, you're, you're in this backwards um, for what you want and apparently what she wants. And that's not working for you. If you notice what you're sharing here, neither of you seem to be really happy, meaning she's not interested in you intimately. She's not interested in the lover's end of things, and you're extremely dissatisfied in your end of the relationship as well. And I want you to see the connection between your disinterest and frustration and your stepping onto her treadmill. You didn't have to do that. You do that for a reason. You followed her because of a lack of confidence in your own leadership of yourself and or um, judging that the life you want is not something that you can create. And so really what we find in all these scenarios behind every man who's unhappy is a deep sense of judgment. He's generally judged him. He doesn't know this, by the way. He's generally judged himself deeply in some way in his life as being incapable of being the provider of some of the things he wants and needs. Connection, um, adventure, etc. He believes then kind of subconsciously that these things come to him or that he needs a partner to give them to him or to cooperate with him or to, to create co-create that with him. There's all kinds of stories out there that people walk in and they all suck because the moment you need somebody to cooperate in the creation of your happiness is the moment that you don't own your happiness. So you don't own your own treadmill. You're on somebody else's by, by your own admission. And we do that, again, when we lack trust and confidence in ourselves and instead we decide slowly to become dependent on someone else. And kind of the giveaway here that there's dependency going on is you even tell us about it in this paragraph. Basically you say, um, I expect if I break the dynamic, that dynamic is me on her treadmill, cut the enmeshment, that's the result of the treadmill, um, I will have to ruin the structure that she enjoys 
great house provider and salary and child care. And maybe, maybe, but you actually, I think, have a bigger fear. You have to ruin the structure that you've enjoyed. You have benefit of some kind for being on Amy's treadmill. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it, right? We follow somebody around when there's benefit. And the benefit of following somebody else around is we don't have to do the hard things because we can wait till they do the hard things. And that's a depolarizing way to live in a romantic relationship with a female. It will turn you into roommates. It will turn you into great, maybe co-parents. And you'll feel maybe partnered in a way that you're, you're getting work done. You, she'll feel like you're a great assistant, but you will not feel like a man who's leading uh, or even participating in the sex and romance um, department, and you're going to be pretty sour about it. And all of this is what I would suggest is kind of the, the polarity is a little bit mixed up. That what you're even describing in Amy is a woman who's in her, what we would say is in her masculine. She's in a very much a doing mode. And women will basically polarize to the opposite of whatever the man's energy is. People have all kinds of insights on this, and I'm not telling you you need to accept mine. I could just share with you observations, talk to hundreds of men a year. I don't believe that a man has a fixed kind of uh, way about him when it comes to masculinity. Men that are not anxious, afraid, ashamed, and insecure tend to feel very alive in their masculinity. They feel confident, they feel assured, they feel courageous. Not that they don't struggle, but they go for it. They lead themselves. They lead other people. They're, they're not hesitant. They're not indecisive. That is just a man feeling his fullness as a man. Now, the moment he starts to get uncertain, ashamed, insecure, afraid, and anxious, he starts to head in a very indecisive uh, direction, a very waiting energy. He just kind of puts the brakes on what we might call the masculine energy. And he takes what you could maybe say is a feminine posture, although I don't think it's, it's not a nice feminine because femininity is beautiful. But when men are in kind of this shadowy femininity, they're pissy and they're bitchy about their waiting. They're angry, they're resentful, um, they're waiting and whatnot, but it's not in a, in, in, in a lovely way like a female will do where she's desiring for her male partner to go first. It's this angry kind of way. And so whatever, wherever a man goes on the spectrum of masculinity, right? What I have observed is his female partner will basically equalize to the opposite of that. And so if he moves in a more feminine direction, she'll move in a more masculine direction because she'll inwardly say, well, nobody else is getting this stuff done. Nobody else is leading and she'll do it. And just like I said, men are not a nice feminine when they're in a feminine energy like this, when they're in a passive kind of... Um, an abdicating role it's not it's not a beautiful femininity it's it's kind of a, and likewise when women move into a strong masculine frame um it's not very pretty either they get things done and whatnot but a lot of times it's bossy they might be angular they might feel controlling they might be belittling and that's not how a good man is a, a man that's leading doesn't he doesn't act that way and so it's a good indication that neither partner is really where they want to be, but yet they, they're there. And so what I find in talking to men is if a man moves back towards the direction of his authentic self, and that would be who he is when he's not afraid, anxious, ashamed, and insecure, that he feels powerful again. He feels, he feels his fullness as a man. He feels masculine. And then after some time, you know, consistently and reliably being in that space, his feminine partner can kind of rest back into like who she would like to be, which is probably not a woman that whose motto is let's get shit done. Most women, though they can do that, it's not how they want to live all the time. And without uh, glands in their body dedicated to the production of testosterone, 
when women try to operate in that mode, and they are good at it, to be clear, they can't do it for a real long time without severe adrenal fatigue. And so they will generally be exhausted. And they don't want to be exhausted. Who likes to be exhausted? But nevertheless, this is what you see. And experience tells me if you move back in a direction away from shame, fear, anxiety, and security, that you will feel your best. You will not be on someone else's treadmill because the only reason you're on someone else's treadmill is you're afraid to be on your own. And when you're back on your own, then now your wife can respond to that if she desires. She could say, wow, that looks like a great way to be. And it doesn't mean you have to blow up life to do it. I think you're, you're experiencing some of the power of the brain to try to keep you safe from an imagined future here. And so in your mind, you're telling yourself a story. I can't be who I want without you know, really pissing her off. Um, and I would say you, you probably will piss her off for a while to be yourself. And that's okay. One of the things we have to learn as men is a, a wife that is upset with us is not dangerous. And it's actually hurtful to women if you treat them like you have to treat them with kid gloves and walk on eggshells because there's some sort of demon spawn monster who can never be upset, right? Um, when a woman is treated that way, it makes her say like, what the heck, man? What is so terrible about me that you can't tolerate my emotional highs and lows. And so that is largely rectified over time as we learn to just be okay with our partner not always feeling okay with us, right? That's just us feeling our insecurity and that can be overcome. And so it's gonna be necessary as you, if you decide to head in the direction of the life that you want, that you become okay with saying and doing and being things that your partner finds agitating. But I promise you, you'll get through it. You'll come to a place of mutual acceptance and understanding doing that. And it will ultimately serve you and your relationship. Um, let me see if I have anything else to say. So I think that's it for this video. I'll talk to you in the next section and we'll see you there.